All right, so this video is going to deal about how you can prove that two triangles are congruent, even though you may not know everything there is to know about all three angles and all three sides. If you have certain conditions met, you can still say that the two triangles are congruent without knowing all six pieces of those information. So just a quick recap of the test that we've learned so far in class. We have uh, one of five choices to say they're congruent. We have SSS, uh, which stands for side, side, side. So if all three sides correspond to congruent sides on the other triangle, then you can say that the two triangles are congruent. Uh, the next one we have is SAS. This involves two sides and an angle. If on both triangles you can say that there are two sides that are congruent to the corresponding sides on the other triangle, and then the angle in between them is also congruent, uh, then you can say by SAS that the two triangles are congruent. There are going to be picture examples here in just a second, so if this isn't making sense, then pictures are on the way. The next one we have is ASA, which is short for angle side angle. This is whenever you have two pairs of congruent angles in the triangles, and then the side between those two angles is also congruent. That way you can say the triangles are congruent. We have angle angle side, which means that you have two angles in a triangle that are congruent to two angles in another triangle and then a side opposite uh, one of those two angles is also going to be congruent. We also have HL, which is a special case for right triangles. It says if a right triangle uh, exists and the hypotenuses are congruent and the legs are congruent, then you can say that the two triangles are congruent. If one of those five conditions is not met, then you have no way of saying that the two triangles are congruent. And so you're either going to need another piece of information uh, or the triangles themselves are not congruent. So let's take a look and see what each one of these look like uh, as a picture. So this is going to be what side, side, side looks like. If you look, and I'll go ahead and change some of the colors up here, um, you have this side right here is congruent to this side on these particular triangles. So those two sides are congruent. You also have these two sides that are given to you as congruent and so now all you need is the third side and if you look right there in the middle of the picture they both share that particular side and so you're going to be able to say by SSS that these two triangles are congruent. All three sides match up with the three sides of the other triangle. This is going to be a picture of side angle side or SAS so again, let's go ahead and kind of color code the stuff that we already can see. I know that this side right here is congruent to this side. And I know that this side is congruent to this side. So again, if I knew something about the third side, I could say by side, side, side that they were congruent. Uh, but I don't have that particular piece of information. But if you look, I've got lines that intersect. If you remember back to some of the stuff we've done, that means that they are vertical angles, the kissing angles. And so I can say those two angles are congruent right there. Once I've done that, I've got the conditions for SAS. I've got two sides and the angle in between on both triangles. And so this one is congruent by side angle side. Next up, we have a case of ASA. So I'm going to go ahead just to kind of stay consistent and again label the sides so I know that this side is congruent to this side and then this picture is actually already marked with the angles I know that this angle right here on the top is congruent to this angle on the bottom and I know that this angle right here on the bottom left is congruent to this angle. So even though the blue and the green angles switched positions, I still have in both triangles two congruent angles and the side in between them. And so that's the criteria that I need. And so this particular one is angle, side, angle. Next up is AAS. Again, I'll mark what I know I've got congruent. I know that I've got this side right here is congruent to this side. I have a couple of congruent angles told to me right here and right here. And then again, like we did earlier, we're going to be able to say that these vertical angles are congruent to each other. 
And so this is going to give us the criteria for AAS. And I want to make the point here between what's the difference between AAS and ASA. AAS means that I've got two angles. So I'm just going to look at this triangle here on the top. I've got this angle and I've got this angle. AAS means that I've got one of the sides across from the angle. So in this case, the side that I'm looking for is across from the blue angle. And if you look at the one here on the bottom, again, I've got these two angles. The side is, again, across from the blue angle. So the side isn't between the two angles. It's across from one of them. If you go back and look at ASA just a second ago, the side is actually between the two angles. So it's a real subtle difference, but that is the difference between ASA and AAS. In ASA, the side is between the two angles. In AAS, the side is across from one of the two angles. And the order of the letters kind of reflects that. ASA, the S is between the two A's. AAS, the S is uh, not between the two A's. And so that's how you can kind of differentiate between those two. All right, next one we want to look at is hypotenuse leg. This is true for right triangles. So the first thing you'll probably want to look at and notice is that uh, both of these triangles have that 90 degree angle, so I can say that they are right triangles. I need to be able to say that the hypotenuses are congruent. Remember the hypotenuse is the side across from the 90 degree angle, and I can say that right there. And so the last thing that I need is I just need to be able to say that one of the legs are congruent, and they share that side right there. And if you look at either triangle, that is a leg for either one of them. So I've got right triangles, the hypotenuses are congruent, and they have a congruent leg, and so I can say they are congruent uh, by hypotenuse leg. Last thing we want to look at are a couple of examples where they are not going to be congruent to each other. Um, remember, if you don't have enough information, you're going to say where they're not congruent. So, for instance, if you only have one angle and one side, that's not going to be enough to be able to tell you anything. But there were two particular cases where uh, it feels like maybe there's enough to say that they're congruent, but in actuality there aren't. So this is the first case right here. If I take a look at what I've got that's congruent, I have got a couple of 90 degree angles in both triangles. So this, these are right triangles, which means you'll probably want to try to use hypotenuse leg. But if you look at the hypotenuse for each of these triangles, you're not told anything about them being congruent. So HL is out in this particular case. If you look at what else you're told is congruent, I know that this angle with two marks is congruent to this angle with two marks. And I also know that this angle with three marks is congruent to this angle with three marks. And so I've got three angles going on, but I don't know anything about the sides. So if you remember from Monday, we know that this case where it's angle, angle, angle means that there is no guarantee that they're congruent. So the answer to this one is uh, not congruent. Last case we want to look at looks something like this. Again, label on your pictures what you know are congruent. So I know that this side right here is congruent to this side. I know that the side with two tick marks is congruent to this side with two tick marks. And then I've got uh, a case of vertical angles here as well. So I've color-coded everything that's congruent. If you look at this triangle on the top right, I've got two sides and I've got the angle between them. So it looks like it maybe has a chance to be SAS. But remember that it has to be that way for both triangles. And if you look here at this triangle on the uh, left side, I've got two sides, but my angle is not in between them. I would actually need to have this angle right here in order to say that it's SAS. So this is that case where it's side-side angle. And so this particular example is not congruent either.